Hello, good evening. This is uh, ITV News Central. We are in the Spinney Hills area of Leicester, where in the early hours of this morning, a fire broke out, which claimed the lives of four people in a house which you can probably see behind me. This evening, they've been named as uh, Shanila Taufik, who was in her 40s, her daughter Zainab, who was 19, and her sons Jamal and Bilal, who were 17 and 15 years old. Tonight, we have uh, three reports to bring you on the programme this evening. Michael Sibbert will have the latest on the fire. Rajiv Popat has the reaction from a shocked community. And Charlotte Grant will be reporting from a short distance from where I'm talking to you at the scene of a murder which is being linked to the events here as revenge is being investigated as a motive for the arson attack. Well, I'll also be speaking live to the local MP who's trying to calm fears in this neighbourhood. But first, Michael Sibbert reports on the fatal fire. Yesterday, this was a family home. Today, it's a burnt out shell. The mother and three children who lived here are dead and the police are looking for their killer. It all started last night. Soeb Ali lives just around the corner from Wood Hill. He told me he could smell burning plastic at around 12.30 and went outside to see what was happening. I came around the corner and I seen people just screaming and saying there's a fire and you can see the the reflection of the heat on all the cars and stuff, like all the other fire and stuff. I just see people just trying to chuck rocks and stones and stuff into the windows trying to break them to let all the smoke out. You can see smoke just coming out, you can smell strong smoke just coming out. And I just ran up the road over here and the first question I asked is, everyone out? Is everyone out? Is everyone out? And they're like, we don't know, we never seen them in the garden. The neighbours like, we checked in the garden to see if they've come out the back, but no one's come out. The family have been named locally as Shanila Tafiq Sattar, who was in her 40s, and her children, Zainab, Jamal and Bilal, aged between 15 and 19. Neighbours told me that their father works in Ireland as a surgeon and comes home at weekends. It wasn't until this morning that people here realised for sure that their efforts to save the family had been in vain. Police recovered four bodies from the house and have been carrying out forensic work for most of the day as part of a murder investigation. The cause of the fire, they say, is suspicious. We're working really closely with the fire brigade. Again, excellent working relationship. Exactly how the, the fire started, where it started, and of course who's responsible is, is something that we'll get to the bottom of. Uh, I have every confidence in the force uh, and in my colleagues uh, to fully investigate these, these terrible, terrible crimes. And of course, really importantly, uh, bring those people who, who may well be responsible, bring them to justice. From first thing this morning, police were refusing to rule out a connection with another murder that happened yesterday afternoon on Kent Street, less than a mile from the fire. This afternoon, they confirmed they were investigating the possibility that this was a revenge attack. The Taufik family were all regular worshippers at the local mosque, just metres away from their home. Tonight, everyone there is praying for answers. Michael Sibbert, ITV News, Leicester. Well, Spinney Hills is an inner city neighbourhood situated in the north of Leicester. It's a diverse, multicultural area. I can see the community mosque just a few metres away from where I'm talking to you tonight. People here are trying to understand what happened to a family who were well known and well liked. Rajiv Popat reports now on a community in shock. Prayers were particularly poignant today for worshippers at the Jummeh Mosque. Inside, Dr. Muhammad Tafiq Sattar was comforted by friends after losing his wife and three children. On the streets of Spinney Hills in Leicester, sadness and shock. Zishin Baswani told me Dr. Tofik Sattar, a surgeon, was working in Ireland when he received a call that no husband or father ever wants to hear. Couldn't believe what, what, what was being said to him, so yeah. he, he, he just went in that state of denial and, and, and he wanted somebody to, somebody else also to, to tell him that yes, it has happened because yeah. it's like losing the whole family overnight. They were highly respected and liked in the area. The mother was a scholar and a theologian herself. The older son had studied in a seminary. The younger son and the daughter were studying theology. The daughter was about to graduate within a year's time. So it's a deep sense of loss, not just in the general community, but in the community of scholars and theologians. We feel a tragic loss. 
Hamad Mandra was friends with 17-year-old Bilal. He taught history to Jamal, who was 15, just three days ago at a local school. He told me he didn't believe that the family could be the victims of a possible revenge attack. I think it's a mistake and uh, someone just got it at the wrong place. They were very nice uh, little uh, boys and um, very sociable, very nice, and they'd like to go out and do a lot of things. Uh, they were not uh, troublesome people, they were just calm people. They were very studious, they would like to study and they came less to, from Ireland to study. One of Zainab's friends said the 19-year-old was like a sister to her. She's someone who wouldn't look at the bad points. She'd always try to find something good in everyone. I can't believe it. Yeah, I wouldn't want to believe it. She's just there with me, I know that. The deaths have shocked the entire community here. There will now be three days of mourning at the mosque and special prayers will be held tomorrow afternoon to remember the family. Rajiv Poppert, ITV News, Leicester. Well, as we mentioned uh, earlier on, police investigating the house fire believe the deaths may be linked to another murder in the city that happened just a few hours earlier, about a mile away from here. Charlotte Grant has been looking at a fatal beating that may have sparked a revenge attack. This evening, the roads surrounding where Anton Akpom was assaulted last night are still closed off as police continue to investigate the possible links between his death and the fatal house fire a little more than a mile away. Today, his mother told me that her son had only recently become a father and was a young man everybody loved. She said the family are utterly bewildered by his murder. At the scene where 20-year-old Anton Akpom was assaulted, flowers for a young man whose life is being cut short far too soon, leaving his family devastated by what's happened. Anton was a beautiful boy and he just had a young baby and he had a good job. He was a teacher and he was a football coach and everybody loved him. And I just want to know if anybody knows who killed my boy. At 5.30 last night, police say they were met by a large group of people on Kent Street in the centre of Leicester and where they found a young man who'd been seriously assaulted. From the scene, he was taken to Leicester Royal Infirmary where he later died from his injuries. Police say they are still in the early stages of this murder investigation, trying to establish how and why Antoine Akbon was attacked last night. An eyewitness who works locally didn't want to appear on camera, but he told me that he heard shouting and saw a group of 10 to 15 young men walking near the far end of that street. He said he noticed one of the group had a stab wound on his back. He said the police arrived almost immediately, but then he saw that the young man had collapsed by the side of the road. Whether it is linked to the house fire that killed a mother and her three children is a key question for police. Only a matter of hours separates their deaths and the murder of Antoine Akpom. A post-mortem examination is expected to take place later. Police are urging anyone who may have been in the Kent Street area last night to come forward so they can start to resolve the questions Antoine Akpom's family so desperately want answered. Charlotte Grant, ITV News. Well, we're joined live now at the scene by the area's MP, Keith Vaz. Good evening to you, Mr Vaz. Good evening. It's been a quite a traumatic day for everybody involved here. I believe you spent some time in the last uh, few hours with the father of the teenagers uh, killed here, the husband of the woman who died. Well, Dr. Tariq uh, al Sutter is clearly in shock uh, following the death of his wife, Shanila, Jamal, Bilal and Zainab. They were the most precious people for him. He was away doing his work as a doctor. He's returned to this tragic news, so he's clearly in shock as is the local community. This is a very peace-loving community. Uh, we meet in the shadow of a mosque with schools around us, and they are all very grief-stricken by what has happened. I, I think uh, when you spend the day here, as, as we have preparing for this programme tonight, you do get a real sense that it is a, you know, a completely normal community. There's utter shock here tonight. Uh, the people that we're talking about who've died were regular worshippers at the mosque. How have people this afternoon started to come to terms with what's happened? I think until they know why this has happened, they will never come to terms with it. And for Dr. El Sattar and his friends and family, who all live in the local area and who worship together, who meet together, they're in and out of each other's houses. Until we get the full facts, there can never be closure. But clearly, 
there is a, a united spirit in Leicester today in support of this family because people feel it could have happened to them and all they want to do is to shower the family, the relatives that are left, with as much love and affection as they can. And unless they do that, I think there can never be closure. A number of relatives are coming from Pakistan. I have spoken to the High Commission there to allow them to come very quickly because obviously they want to all share in this grief together. But at the moment, the community here is in shock. And in terms of that community, like you say, they're in shock, but there's also a little bit of fear around, isn't there, tonight? There has been fear because w there are all kinds of rumours as to why this has happened. Leicestershire police have been absolutely superb in keeping elected officials informed, in talking to the community. Uh, there's going to be a police presence around here, as there has been all day, and I think that should reassure people that they are going to be safe. And that is the message that comes out from today. Be calm and be safe. The police are all around and they will make sure that people are protected and people should not uh, take any uh, action at all. They should be aware that they should just wait and listen to what the police have had to say and cooperate because a lot of people have information that could be very helpful. So it sounds a little bit like you're appealing for calm this evening then, particularly on the, on the streets around here tonight. Well, I think people are calm, but I think they are all obviously shocked by uh, what has happened. Uh, as you see, this is a very peaceful community. The, the level of crime is, is very low in this part of Leicester. But I think that uh, they just want to be reassured, and I think the police have done that job extremely well. And this is a community that will cooperate, that will seek to provide information, and that will assist in any way they can and they want to try and give as much comfort to the family as possible. Mr Vaz, thank you very much for joining us uh, on the programme this evening. Keith Vaz, uh, MP for Leicester East, of course. Uh, we're going to have plenty more from here a little bit later on uh, in the programme, but for now, though, we're going to hand you back to the studio for the rest of the day's news. Kate and Steve. Matt, for now, thank you.